What's up guys and gals, my name is Joy, and today we're going to be talking about Monster Hunter World and the lack of endgame. So, in Monster Hunter World we have Tempered Elder Dragons, which have no G rank, no real challenge to them. I think the only time they're a challenge is like the first time you do them within the storyline until you learn the moveset. And then on Tempered, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so, Monster Hunter World has a lack of in-game content. Yes, yes it does. And to those that I've read trying to defend this and say that it doesn't, there are other Monster Hunter games that have way more uh, commitment time. So an example would be like For You, I hear has like 5,000 hours worth of content. And yeah, some of those are expansions and DLC and whatever. And that's a full game, and one could argue that. But didn't we pay 60 bucks expecting a full game from Capcom? I, I don't know. I mean, their DLC is free, which I can't complain about, supposedly. But even then, if they follow Generations' method of G-Rank, then we will have to buy another Monster Hunter World game just to get G-Rank. So let me explain. So in Generations, they released uh, gener uh, Double Cross, which came out right after Generations later on, which added the G-Rank difficulty. If you don't know that, you can go look that up. Anyways, I don't want to buy another Monster Hunter World game for G-Rank. In fact, I think World needs way more monsters uh, than it currently has. World currently has, I think, 30 monsters, whereas other games in the base core component of the game have way more. Uh, in fact, I think some of the monsters in World can actually be taken the fuck out. Like, example, the Great Jagras is a useless waste of space. The Hukulu Kulu guy, or whatever, the chicken dude, wasted space. The Pookie Pookie, waste of space. These, these are monsters that, in my opinion, serve no points other than just to be there to say you have a monster in the game. Uh, now, to the casual player, maybe not. To the casual player, you're going to have people that suck really fucking terrible at games and hate more power to you, I guess. But I'm being honest when I say that. I'm not going to sugarcoat that shit. So, there you go. But to the casual scrub, hooky pooky might be difficult. God forbid if it is. You must have, like, serious failure with your hands if you think that boss is, like, difficult at all. Like, that's... That's the equivalent of pretty much My Little Pony in terms of difficulty. It's just non-existent. So, Monster Hunter World. Do I like the game? Yes, I like the game. However, I've been considering, uh, as an endgame player myself, currently in World, to picking up one of the Switch games, like Double Cross, because there's more content there. Considering this is Capcom's new entry into the hearts and minds of those people who, you know, they're trying to win over with Monster Hunter. In the in-game aspect, or elements, I think they ultimately failed. And some people might disagree with that, but that's what I think, that's where I think they failed, and that's my thoughts on it. They had a real chance to really bring Monster Hunter to the console, and to, to an aspect they did succeed, you know, they sold 6 million copies. The problem is, is that when people complain about Monster Hunter World's endgame, they're complaining from, I would say, a Destiny or Warframe point of view. Those games have great endgames. One of those games, you know, one could argue, oh, well, Destiny, you know, is piece, you know, it has time to build up its endgame, blah, 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 blah. Not really. Bungie is, Bungie doesn't deserve that type of credit for its endgame, let's be honest. It's, its raids are okay, maybe in the first game. In the second game, don't even try to justify that piece of shit. But, with that said, Warframe, on the other hand, it just says a free-to-play game with a decent end game. It's got Riven mods, it's got Eidolon farming. And I gave Warframe some shit when Monster Hunter came out, mainly because of what EE was doing to the frames, but that's another story entirely. However, Warframe succeeds in the aspect that it has something to do to keep your time occupied, to keep you going after something for an extended long period of time. 
So when people rumor that Monster Hunter games have hours and hours and hours upon content, like, um, like, oh, Monster Hunter 4, you had 5,000 hours or 3,000 hours, or, and then Monster Hunter Generations and Double Cross had hundreds and thousands of hours, and yet Monster Hunter World, I've beaten the game in 300 hours, I'm basically decorating, you know, decoration farming at this point to fight more high rank bosses, I guess, I am improving my G rank skill, if you want to call it that. But I played Dark Souls. Let's be honest. This game is so much easier than Dark Souls on every level, um, in terms of its fights. And I hate to say that because I know in other games Monster Hunter can be very difficult. Because um, I've played other, you know, I've played the PS2 version of Monster Hunter. It was pretty difficult back then, maybe because it was the controls. They, you know, it was the first game in the franchise. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say what I think about World. World, honestly, has been streamlined, right? That's its biggest fault, in my opinion. A lot of people think that's a good thing. I think it's a negative. Because by streamlining World, you've dumbed down, you know, the bosses, you've dumbed them down, you've dumbed down the grind or the elements that otherwise would be nice for veteran players. So basically what Capcom did with World is this. They made it more casual and enjoyable for everybody to get into to profit and make their sales margins higher, which in a company standpoint is a smart thing. The problem is, is you take away the core element and audience that supports you at the same time. So an example would be they could have released World in a state that kept the hardcore fan base happy and kept the casuals happy. And at first, a lot of people thought that. I don't think that at all. I think World has actually taken away from the hardcore, you know, late game player. And to the casual, the problem with this is you're going to get casuals that say, well, you know, that's a good thing. I don't like elitist pricks anyways, blah, blah, blah. The problem is, is those casuals don't realize that eventually one day their little My Little Pony, Jargris, they're going to grow up from that. And they're finally going to start progressing in the game. And they're going to run into the same problems that everybody else is running into at the end game. This is also an issue that happened with Destiny 2. This is why Destiny YouTubers and streamers came out and talked about this. And, uh, you know, obviously ended up quitting because they couldn't shill for the game anymore. I'm no shill, but I am going to go ahead and tell you how I see it. Since I am at the end game in Monster Hunter. And I think it's lacking, right? That's obviously what I think. How can Capcom fix this without pissing off a bunch of people? Well, they need to release G-Rank sooner than later. They need more monsters, because 30 is not enough, especially when half of the high rank monsters are reused fucking assets. And if the leaks are be to be believed, and don't get me wrong, I've seen I've seen the leaks of some of those new monsters might, that might be coming, and while I agree with some of those, I also think they're a bad fucking idea. That shit may have worked in the handheld versions, but I still think it's a bad idea for Monster Hunter World, considering Capcom wants a new take at World. So what do I mean by this? Well, there's a video going around, and there's a list on Reddit going around. There's a couple couple rumors and speculations. No one knows which one's exactly right. But these are just theories and rumors, you know. Speculations on what monsters we're going to get for the future. And one, one list recently that I was sent by a buddy on Facebook, he thinks another Teostra Blue and a Dark Kirin are coming. Well, guess what? I'm not excited for those. In fact, I'm excited for the other list that I saw more so than this list. Now, if this list is correct and true, I am going to be very disappointed in Capcom for not capitalizing on the fact that they're trying to hold an audience and they failed. So what do I mean by this? So Dark Kirin and the blue Teostra that's coming, along with Devil Joe and April and, you know, all that lovely fuzzy crap that you want to call monsters. Here's my issue with that. A Dark Kirin and a blue Teostra variant are not new monsters. It's the same monster, it's just been recolored, right? Now, again, this may work, you know, may have worked with the handheld crowd. They may have bought into this and been like, oh, that's cool, the armor's cool, whatever. I'm sorry, I'm not buying that. You would have to be the dumbest Monster Hunter player in existence to settle for a reskinned color variant. Now, the only difference with that is the armor might look different, or it might be a different color. But it doesn't matter in World when you can just recolor the goddamn pigments. 
So that's a problem. I don't like reskin bosses, and I don't like recolors of bosses, especially if nothing really is going to be different from the regular variants. So that's a waste of time, Capcom. Start again, go back to the drawing board if those leaks are true. Please and thank you. Okay, the other leak that I saw for Monster Hunter World was actually a little bit better because it had a bunch of monsters from the other games, but they weren't all reskins. Some of them were actually just new creatures, right? Like, not, not new new, but they were like monsters from the other games that, you know, the, the basic versions of those other monsters. So, like, other Elder Dragons... Uh, that we don't have in the game yet, um, and whatnot. And I would rather have monsters that are not recolored, like Kirin and Teostra, for example. And I know they exist in the other games, right? I understand that. I've looked that up. I've done my research on that. The problem is with that, though, is it screams lazy. It screams. Uh, we're not really putting in a lot of effort for this update when we could be putting in a lot of effort for this update to give our fans something to enjoy. And I think that's what people are not understanding with Capcom or with that April update is, okay, so with the April update, it's rumored to be believed that we're getting Devil Joe and everyone knows that already. Okay, Devil Joe's fine. I'm okay with that. Why am I okay with that? Because he's a monster from the existing games. Great. But I didn't get to play those other games, so to me, he's new. And to a new player... In Monster Hunter, at least for World anyways, looking in, you know, because I haven't touched a Monster Hunter since PS2, but I have looked at for you and Generations as, you know, in terms of, like, wanting to buy them and pick them up, and I've seen the monsters, I've seen the recolors, and as a, you know, if I was a fan of Monster Hunter, the last thing I think I'd want is fucking recolors of Kieran and fucking Teostra in an April update, when I would rather have just monsters you know, the variants of a regular monster already, like Devil Joe, like the original variants. Because um, I think recolors don't do anything, right? If they're going to add the same look in Kieran gear, and I could just color the fucking pigments, why the fuck bother adding those? That's a waste of space. That is, that is basically artificially making a monster that you already have a variant of in your game, and calling it new. That's just being lazy. Let's just be honest. That's like Bungie taking a fallen enemy and reskinning it a bunch of times. Remember that? Yeah, we all remember that. Let's not kid ourselves, guys. So, I like Monster Hunter Worlds. I think it's a great game. But I think Capcom really needs to capitalize in the April update, or they're going to fail. Like, hard. Because I, I honestly think Monster Hunter World is lacking. And when I have to look up other Monster Hunter games keep my interest in the franchise, it tells you that something is wrong with World, big time. So World is still a good game, still a lot of content here for a game, and I think, I think that's the issue with a lot of console gamers too, is they, they look at all these games they've paid 60 bucks for and realize that they're not getting what they've paid for in most of them, and so they'll settle for mediocrity whenever it comes, right? They'll settle for basically anything without really complaining much um that's the wrong step to take i think i think that monster hunter world needs g rank in april with devil joe i think it needs um you know it needs more creatures it needs more weapons the weapon varieties especially like just just look at the weapons from other monster hunter games and then come back to this video and look at what we got in World. Some of the weapons in World are pretty cool, right? They're pretty cool, but don't get me wrong, some of them are also copy and pasted from other games, like the the sword that, you know, the Monster Hunter Great Sword. That's That's been there since the PS2 days, man. That's a reskin. That's a copy and pasted sword. And I think that's Monster Hunter's problem. It's like Dynasty Warriors in a way. It doesn't try to change the formula much, but at the same time, it seems like it's a little scared to change the formula a little bit, too. Like it's afraid to reach out and grab it by the bull, or grab it by the horns, as I want to say, and take that leap into changing something. And that's that's the problem with modern gaming, at least for me, on a bigger scale. With a lot of games, they don't take a lot of risk anymore, uh, because they feel that it will fail 
hands. That's, you know, that's understandable as a, you know, a developer and as a company, if your, you know, your product fails, you're not going to make your, your, uh, your money back to make the next product. And so I can understand that. However, World clearly is a step back in some areas for Monster Hunter as a franchise. Um, and you can, you know, you can say what you will about that, but I'm an in-game player in most of the games I play, and having, you know, again, if I'm looking up other Monster Hunter games to play, because they've got more content in them, because I, I do enjoy World enough that I want to go pick up another Monster Hunter game, but it doesn't mean I'm going to be playing World, that means I'm going to be playing another Monster Hunter game, you know, and that's, that's the problem. Uh, I would rather play World. I would rather play World because I paid 60 bucks for World, but if I have to look for another game because World has no fucking end game to speak of other than deco farming, when the other games have over 5,000 hours worth of content and World has ran its course at 300, I mean Warframe, like I said, is a prime example of a game that knows how to do content because I spent... Ah, shit, how much time I spent in Warframe? I've spent a total of almost a thousand hours in Warframe, and I'm still not done with that game. A thousand hours, just in a free-to-play, a thousand hours. That is already double the time, if not triple the time of World, if you were to do it by 200 hours per. That's already, like, double the time. And it's a shame, because, like I said, I like World. I like the combat of World. I like... Uh, I like what it's done with Monster Hunter. I think it's done a lot of great things. But at the same time, it's done a lot of bad things. And I don't I think now that the paint has weared off, you know, the new paint of the new game is worn off, people are starting to understand that. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think the Monster Hunter community can really bullshit its way out of the lack of things to do at the end game. And that's good because that's what Capcom needs to hear to fix the problem, right? They need that criticism, and they need it hard sometimes. And I understand that, you know, Capcom might be doing other games and patching other things for other games. They don't have time to worry about this right now. They're doing the best they can, blah, blah, blah. But if you look at the other Monster Hunter games, like Generations and Double Cross, you know, Double Cross was the expansion for G-Rank, meaning you had to buy Generations first, because Generations came out first, and then you had to turn around and spend more money on Double Cross, which was about the same price uh, as Generations. I think it's like 40 bucks now, but, you know, when it was probably new, it was about 60 bucks. It was a new game, but it just added, and it was basically, it was like, it wasn't like you were buying a new game. You were buying an expansion for a game that added G-Rank, but they sold it to you like it was a new game. And that's the problem, right? Because I'm not going to pay... $60 for G-Rank. That's a patch, right? In an MMO, adding heroic difficulty is patch-worthy shit. You ever play World of Warcraft? If you haven't by now, the game is 10 years old, if not older. You should have played it at least once in your fucking lifetime. Goodbye. Um, the point I'm trying to make, guys, is that that's a patch, right? Bungie tried to get away with this too, and you had Des Destiny fanboys try to defend it. Like, they've never played an MMO in their fucking life. <sighs> MMOs do this shit for free because you pay a monthly service, right? Now, I understand we're not paying one to Capcom, but at the same time, I could pay 15 bucks for DLC and get G-Ring, is what I'm saying, right? That should be a $15 DLC, if not anything else. That's what it should be. And so... The point I'm trying to make, and on top of that, Capcom has also came out and said that all updates for World will be free. So they already expect not to charge people. So they can't really turn around and say, hey, look, we're going to charge for G-Rank 2. You can't do that. If you've already said all the updates are going to be free, then you need to deliver on said promise. Otherwise, come out with a media post right fucking now and tell people that you're a lying piece of shit. Because that will really help deter people away from your company. They won't do that, by the way, because the game sold 6 million copies. And if they do, they have to be the dumbest business on the planet. Which, if you take their track record, it's not very good either. So it wouldn't surprise me. They, they could be EA for all I care, in terms of that. Uh, because, you know, Street Fighter V was a colossal failure of a game. 
I'm sorry. Even though you're having an event for it in Monster Hunter, there's no denying that that game was a colossal failure. Everybody knows it by now. So, moving forward, is Monster Hunter World a great game? Yes. Yes, it is. It's very fun. Does it have the longevity of those other Monster Hunter games? Fuck no, it doesn't. And you shouldn't settle for that. My name is Enjoy, guys. Have a good one. Take care.